Stars are the largest singular structures in our universe, ranging from 10 times the size of the Earth to a staggering 170,000 times. That's right, our Sun is small compared to most stars out there, which is also the reason why astronomers call it a yellow dwarf. Our Sun is roughly 5 billion years old, and we expect it to live for another 5 billion years after which it grows over 200 times in size to become a red giant. It will only live on for a short 120 million years in this stage, before it sheds its outer layers and becomes a white dwarf inside of a planetary nebula. Now, you may wonder how we know these things and how things are different for other stars. Also, what about supernovae and black holes? Yes, we'll get there soon. But first, we'll have to discuss the way that stars are born. This happens inside of a molecular cloud, which is basically a large collection of space gas that slowly but surely starts coming together due to the gravity of each individual dust grain. Over the course of billions of years, this cloud contracts so much that it starts to form a clump, some would even say a ball. This is where the entire future of the star is decided because the weight of this clump will decide the size, lifetime, and even the way it dies. Everything comes down to its initial mass, and typically this is expressed in solar masses, because it's easier to remember that the sun weighs one solar mass rather than 4.3 thousand billion 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 pounds. So, starting with the smallest first, a cloud that weighs less than 0.8 solar masses will not become a star. It's not heavy enough for the core to ignite, and thus it remains cold and dark. We call these objects brown dwarves or failed stars. A cloud that weighs between 0.8 and 8 solar masses will become what is known as a low mass star. These stars look and behave very much like our sun and live in a similar manner. The main difference is that the heavier stars burn much faster and brighter just like the old saying goes, burn bright, die young. And we're not kidding when we say young, as an 8 solar mass star only lives for about 50 million years, a staggering 200 times shorter than our own sun. This is because the higher pressures in the star burn more hydrogen, thus depleting its resources at a faster pace. Then, once there's no more hydrogen to burn, the star expands into a red giant and starts burning helium in its core. This process doesn't create as much energy as burning hydrogen does and also uses up the available fuel much faster. Once this happens, the core starts contracting under its own gravity, dragging along bits of unburnt helium and igniting it in small flashes. These flashes aren't enough to stop the core from contracting, but do blow away more and more of the star's outer layer. Eventually, all of it is blown away into what we call a planetary nebula, and the core becomes a neutron star. It can live on for billions of years in this state, slowly cooling down into a black dwarf. We call the cloud a planetary nebula because we used to think that this is how planets formed. Later, this turned out to be wrong, but the name stuck. The core is called a neutron star because all the elements inside of it were compressed so tightly that they fell apart into neutrons. This is one of the densest materials in the universe, with a teaspoon of it weighing a staggering 4 billion tons. Now, heavier stars are not much different at first, except that they start out shining blue light. These stars live much shorter lives than our sun, with a 60 solar mass star living for only 3 million years, but burning up to a million times brighter than our sun. Once their time is up, two things can happen to these stars. Stars that start out below 30 solar masses will become a supernova. At first, they'll do the same as the low mass stars and burn up their hydrogen. Then they expand into a red supergiant and start burning helium and even some heavier elements. However, the star will run out of fuel at some point and the core will start collapsing. But this time, the collapse will not stop as easily and compress the core until something happens that causes the whole thing to explode in an incredibly violent way, reaching a peak brightness that can be billions of times brighter than our sun. 
We call this event a supernova explosion. In its center, a hot neutron star is left, and around it is a magnificent cloud of expanding gas that we call a supernova remnant. What exactly causes this explosion? We have no idea, and astronomers are working hard to try and solve this riddle. Now, onto the heaviest stars. These juggernauts live the shortest lives of all, burning through their fuel in just a few million years. Like all other stars, they expand after that into a red giant, and the same happens when the fuel is used up. However, whatever causes the supernova explosion is not strong enough this time, and the core keeps compressing further and further into what we believe is a single point. This point, called a singularity, is the heart of the black hole. The rest of the star gets slowly sucked up, increasing the pull of the black hole as well as its event horizon. This is the distance after which nothing, not even light, can escape the pull of the singularity. A black hole dies very slowly over the course of billions of years as it evaporates into nothing. If it's not fed, that is. But we'll leave that for another video.